What if I told you there are invisible forces that can affect your life? In fact, I used a special camera and took a photo of it here. Can you see it? If you don't see it yet, don't worry, nothing's wrong with your vision. The visible force I was talking about is the legacy of redlining and its effects on urban tree canopy cover. Both of these neighborhoods are in LA County, within 15 miles of each other. On the left is a residential area in Boyle Heights, and on the right is Westwood. Even without telling you anything else, most of you probably have an idea which is the nicer neighborhood, the one with more trees. And that's what our group was interested in, the effects of historical redlining policies on urban tree canopy coverage and its cascading effects on community health. To recap, redlining was a practice conducted by the Homeowners Loan Corporation in the late 1930s, where they developed appraisal maps like this one for over 200 urban areas. Areas graded D, shown in red, were considered hazardous, and the justifications for the grading were often rooted in racism. Retrospective research has confirmed that redlining was essentially a tool for segregation that prevented upward economic mobility for minorities, Black Americans in particular. With the effects of global warming intensifying, we were interested in exploring how redlining may have contributed to the environmental injustice. Here's how we thought about the problem. First, did historical redlining affect modern day tree canopy coverage? Next, do neighborhoods with lower tree canopy coverage exhibit more urban heat islands and less protection against air pollutants? And lastly, do the combined effects of lower tree canopy cover, poor air quality, and increased heat stress ultimately lead to worse health outcomes as measured by emergency department usage related to asthma and cardiovascular events? To achieve this, we harmonized five different data sets obtained from public repositories. An example of that process is shown here. After matching the coordinates, we found the intersections of those areas to produce a final common area data set. Using this common data set, we found that a graded neighborhoods generally have higher tree canopy cover. In fact, when we look at the difference, our model estimates that a D graded neighborhood has 20% less tree canopy cover compared to an A graded neighborhood. And this is in LA today. After establishing this crucial first piece, we looked at indicators for a proposed mechanism. Unfortunately, the results were mixed. For example, higher tree canopy cover was only mildly correlated with lower concentrations of PM2.5 particles. We think that in a pollution high city like LA, the effects might be too small to detect. Definitely room for future research. Since the results for a proposed mechanism were inconclusive, we next took a look at the direct effects that tree canopy cover may have on health outcomes. Looking at asthma risk, we saw that higher tree canopy cover in a given area was correlated with lower incidence of asthma-related emergency department visits. In fact, our model estimates that for each percentage increase in tree canopy coverage, there is a 0.93 percentile reduction in asthma emergencies. We saw similar trends for cardiovascular risk holding base constant, our model estimates that for each percentage increase in canopy coverage, there is a 0.54 percentile reduction in cardiovascular emergencies. Altogether, we saw strong evidence that suggests tree canopy cover may provide protection against asthma and cardiovascular emergencies. To summarize, since higher tree canopy coverage is associated with lower incidence of asthma and cardiovascular emergency department visits, it suggests that areas with low tree canopy coverage would not enjoy the same protective effects. This implies that persons living in neighborhoods with low tree canopy cover are at greater risk for asthma and cardiovascular related incidents. As the effects of climate change intensify, it becomes increasingly imperative to address environmental injustice now. Trees don't grow overnight. Damage from decades of structural racism discrimination and oppression won't come undone overnight either. What we can do now, however, is sow the seeds of change, literally. Planting a tree today may just save a life in the near future. Thank you.